Okay. okay. Breath. I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your photography. Oh man, my photography. I click a button and that's it. <laughs> I give out all my raw photos. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I will punch any photographer in the face that does that and call themselves a professional. My name is Jacqueline. Do you want me first, last, middle? Okay. My name is Jacqueline David Martinez. And no, David is not my middle name. <laughs> um. <laughs> my photography. Well, very cliche. I always had a camera in my hand. So I went to photography school um, in Wilmer, Minnesota at Ridgewater College, Community College. And um, it was very focused on portraits and families and weddings and very technical and make sure you always use your light meter. And I think that's a really cool thing to like learn that way. And I'm very glad I did because if I wouldn't have gone to college, I don't really know what I'd be doing with my life right now. Um, but I wanted to be a music photographer. And I knew that in, like, I knew in, like, 2009. I graduated in 2011 from high school. In 2009, I went to my first music festival, and I would do anything I can to get as close as possible to the stage to take photographs of the bands because I liked music photography. And I knew that if I was going to go in photography, I'd, I wanted to do music photography. And so where I was... Uh, supposed to be focusing on portraits and like bettering myself at that I was going to a venue through Youth for Christ called the First Street Warehouse um, on the weekends and photographing as many shows as possible and traveling to the Twin Cities for shows and um, really 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 was just pushing hard in that and um, in 2012 my friend Blake um, <coughs> excuse me he encouraged me to email HM Magazine um, to see if I can photograph for a music festival called Sunshine Festival. And they said yes, and they got approved through Sunshine, and so I photographed for HM Magazine. And that was a huge deal. Um, that was, yeah, summer of 2012, I photographed for HM Magazine. I really, really, really love just like photographing music. I think it's a beautiful thing, being able to photograph um, using my art to photograph other people doing their art. Um, and I think it's important for musicians to know that they are valued as people and um, just like showing them that like what they do is a beautiful thing and whether that means capturing them as just like just an art, just them like individually on, you know, like during their set to capture their emotions and like what they're putting into it or if it's capturing like them with the crowd like, um, I think, like, fan musician interaction is a very beautiful thing. And so I think I just really love the emotion and the rawness that comes from a music scene. And I just really love capturing that. And I love the family and friends and the connections I've made through music scene. Um, Growing up was cool. Um, I have, um, I have three brothers and a sister. Um, but growing up, there was just four of us. After their separation, like my dad was gone for like six months because, like, obviously that's a hard thing when you like leave your marriage. But not that I would know. I'm freaking single as heck. So, um, but I didn't grow up without my mom and dad parenting together, they like parented us together, even as separate parents. Um, you know, as, as single parents, they still parented us together. So like they were best friends, you know, things weren't always easy, but like my dad was over every day and we saw him every weekend. And it wasn't a matter of like, you have the kids this weekend, like, if one of my siblings didn't want to go with him for the weekend, it was fine type thing. Um, 11 turned 12 on the move. I moved from California to Minnesota. And it was just like in that period of being like 
I'm 20, 22 mile, miles away from my dad. 22. LOL. <laughs> 2,200 miles away from my dad. And so there was obviously a lot of, like, frustration and, like, feeling like we were taken away from one parent. Um, my mom had gotten remarried, and so we had lived in Minnesota with my mom and stepdad um, by 2005. And um, it was like, there was like this time where I was just very frustrated, um, and I blamed my dad for a lot of things when he, when I didn't need to blame him, and I didn't ever tell him this. Um, so sorry, Dad. But um, there was, like, a time in my life where I was very frustrated. And I blamed my dad for the fact that we were, that our relationship wasn't as strong. Um, and um, there was, my dad had moved to Minnesota for two and a half, maybe two and a half years, two two years or something. And I had just moved out to college. And so while my siblings were like rekindling and regrowing their relationship, I was off at college and wasn't growing my relationship with him as much. So I always felt like after moving, I had just become very distant from my dad. And um, it, it made me very mad. And I blamed it inside my own head. I blamed it all on him. When in reality, I didn't put forth in a relationship very much either. I mean, I'm not saying that my dad didn't try at all because my dad definitely, my dad would call us and stuff, but I have a hard time talking about things with people if, if it's not consistent. So because of my own emotional problems, um, I put a lot of blame on, on him and I put a lot of blame on my mom for like moving us to Minnesota. And this was like years after we moved to Minnesota, so um, it was like, I was totally fine. And then I hit like 16 and it just like hit me like a rock suddenly, you know? So I don't know. Um, I'm a pretty emotional person. So kind of went in waves and it's like carried over to being an adult and feeling like there was abandonment and, um, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's ever going to be easy that I was 12 years old and lived 2,200 miles away from him. But I still feel just very thankful that, like, my dad is in my life, you know, that I do have a relationship with him. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, it didn't affect me as a kid, but it affected me as an adult. I think it's affected me to this day. Um, you know, and I think it's obvious. I think it's very obvious, um, depending on, like, where you've, where you've been at in my life, you know, um, depending on like time periods in my life of where you've been. So I don't know. It's, it's a hard thing that I deal, I deal with it every day now, I believe. Yeah, it was a very beautiful thing. The fire station was run by, um, a guy named Fred, and Fred became, like, my spiritual dad. Um, just, like, was my biggest cheerleader. Um, you know, I claimed to be a Christian throughout high school. Um, I claimed that I was a follower of God and stuff. Um, but I, I knew that I believed in God in my head, but I didn't believe in God in my heart. And so it was, it was, like, this big battle of, am I really a Christian? And there was a night in my senior year where my sister and I got in this really huge fight and I damned her to hell. And I'll never forget it. Um, cause that's like, I think that's the worst thing I've ever done is like screaming at my sister to go to hell. And, um, it was probably over something really dumb. I don't remember what it was. Uh, and I just knew like in that moment, I was like, do I, do I really know God? And so by this time, Fred had been married, remarried and, uh, married a wonderful woman named Claire and we all called Claire mom because she's our youth group mom and I went down and just bawled my eyes out to Claire and was like I don't know if I believe in God I don't know I was like I don't know if there's if there's been any growth and she just like had to stop me and look me in the eyes and tell me that like 
even if I don't see that there's been growth, that she has seen growth in just the year that she was, you know, that she was, um, up in Minnesota. And, um, it was just like an eye opening thing. And, um, I don't know, man, if it wasn't for the fire station throughout high school, like, I don't know if I really would have felt like I had a sense of like, I really don't feel like I would have had anything important to look forward to. Yeah, if it wasn't for the fire station, um, I really don't know where I'd be. Wow. Um, to just have someone that cared enough about me to invite me into their home, you know? It was just a really, it's, now that I think about it, it's a really beautiful thing. I guess I don't, like, think about it too often. I don't tell, I don't, I feel like, you know, when I talk about the fire station, I talk about it in my testimony for sure. Um, and maybe it's, like, harder to talk about it now because Fred has passed away, but, um, yeah, the fire station was a very beautiful part of my life and something that I will, like, always hold on to. Yeah. Awesome. When did Fred pass away? Uh huh. When did Fred pass away? Um, he passed away in November of 2014, so we're coming up on two years. Um, he got sick in, I think it was 2012. Um, so I graduated in 2011 with John, his son, and, um, yeah, I think it was 2012. He got sick, and, um, there was obviously, like, there were times where it was better and times where it was worse. And then um, I got a text message. And um, this was it was at a time in my life where I just wasn't connecting with my family and wasn't going home. Only went home for holidays. And it had been 10 months since I'd seen my family. Um, and I get a text message from Claire. And she was like, I think, I think you need to come home to see Fred and I was like I'll be there this weekend and this was on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday um it was a Wednesday and she's like I don't think he's gonna make it and I show up I uh praise Jesus for the the people in my life who I worked with understood um they covered my shift and let me leave that day I left in the middle of my shift. Uh, I packed a bag and hopped in my car and left. And I didn't even go home when I got to town. I went to the hospital and I just, I got to have alone time with Fred. And, um, you know, he wasn't responsive and that was really hard. But I know, I, I just, there's something in me that tells me that he could hear me. And um, he passed away the following day on Thursday and yeah Fred was just like a spiritual dad and um you know it, it felt like I had you know it and I did like I lost one of the most important persons in my life and like one of my closest family members and um you know there was no one that that encouraged me to chase after God more than Fred did um, and I, like, it, it's, it, it's a beautiful thing that he's not hurting anymore, you know, that he's not sick anymore, um, he passed away with, um, there was, like, he had, like, brain cancer and kidney failure and another kind of cancer, and I don't remember what it was, there was just so much going on in his body, um, uh, but it actually brought me closer to my family and made me, like, realize that I can't take them for granted because I definitely took them for granted for a good year and a half. So, um, yeah, Fred, Fred means a lot to me. Um, and, he, you know, he's, I'll never, never in my lifetime will I forget him. I have a... I carry his, I mean, his obituary is on my wall in my bedroom, and then it's also in my car because, like, I want Fred to go with me everywhere I go. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm just very thankful to have someone who saw so much in me when I didn't see anything in myself.